In this video, we're going to be discussing the top 10 decks in Marvel Snap. These decks have been designed using a variety of sources to ensure that you're getting the best decks with the most reliable data. These decks feature many different cards of many different archetypes. We even have three hidden gems that have relatively low play rates with very high win rates to give you a little bit of contrarian plays against the meta. Regardless, if you'd like to support this series, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. It's literally all that YouTube cares about. It's free and it makes a tremendous difference and I really, really, truly appreciate it. Let's get started with deck number one. In deck number one here, we are talking about Jane Jaw at a 59% win rate. Jane Jaw is literally one of the top decks in the game right now. The inclusion of High Evolutionary and the ability to use something like the Wasp repeatedly in Jane Jaw gives it a ton of value. It honestly just is an incredible deck that just hits amazing things. And one of the key things about it is that even when you're just waiting for Lockjaw to drop on turn three and you're just skipping turns, uh, the Hulk's getting bigger. So it's like you don't really miss out on that power. That's two power per turn. You're skipping on the Hulk anyways. So it's pretty significant when you consider a one drop is usually a two power card. On turn four, you have Jubilee as a backup. You can play Dracula as well. And of course, Thor with Mjolnir is a great combination in conjunction with Jane Foster. Overall, this deck, although it seems high rolly, ultimately ends up being relatively reliable with a lot of key ways to basically shut down your opponent and go incredibly vertical on the board. Balance continues to be one of the absolute top contenders in the meta. Although it is susceptible to both Sandman and Wave, there's honestly not that much Sandman out there, and Wave can be a bit of a factor, but fortunately for Balance, if you're in a situation where you know you're against a Wave player, you play your full turn on turn 5, and you have your Chavez for turn 6. The prevalence of Wave, and specifically in Conquest, is resulting in the Chavez base list taking priority over the non-Chavez base list, because it allows you to have a consistent turn 6 play with 9 power, which is still relatively useful, as opposed to just basically being to drop down a well mysterio on turn six or something like that which obviously you don't want to do so with the prevalence of wave this is currently one of the top uh, versions of bounce it does take some practice to pilot but when you get the hang of it it just puts up incredible power the ability for hit monkey to go incredibly vertical is insane it puts up so much power and especially when played in combination with mysterio the key four cards here that you really want to pay attention to are uh, angela bishop because it benefits from the mysterio so much as well as hit monkey and of course kitty pride who is the key target for beast kitty pride becomes free and becomes a very consistent play just be very aware however if you're against the wave based deck that kitty pride of course is going to bounce back to your hand on turn five meaning that you won't be able to play it on turn six unless you of course choose it over chavez if you've ramped it up that high regardless bounce takes some practice but when you get the hang of it you got one of the best decks in marvel City. i am so excited that destroy is making a legitimate comeback in the meta this is not just like some fancy pants combo destroy that's kind of the flash in the pan meta type thing no this is like straight up classic destroy we got deadpool because there's so many one drops out there that you know you almost just want to kill longer or anything and everything you can. Uh, you also run a Sabretooth in this deck. Are you kidding me? A Sabretooth? We're actually seeing Sabretooth in the meta? That's crazy. We also have Venom, of course, which is providing tremendous value. The recently buffed Venom. Uh, Null's an expensive piece, but you know what? It's a great card in this deck. And of course, you have the Death, which is an 812, which is actually performing... Okay, it's not as bad as we originally thought it was going to be. It's still not, like, great, and that's why you're running so many, like, everything's just a destroy card. There's no room. There's no room for not destroying, basically, because of the situation with death, uh, the wave synergy now being gone. So what you're often seeing is death being played on, like, turn four or five, given the opportunity, usually on turn five. Uh, it's not being saved for, like, a free turn on like turn six play for instance so just bear that in mind uh there's a lot of different synergies available for this deck it has tremendous power output and null completely counters shang chi so if you play death on turn five and you know they're holding shang chi you can play the null and if they shang chi the uh the death the power just transfers over to null which is a really cool thing ultimately destroy is back and i couldn't be happier another week has gone by and sarah control continues to be a very viable choice in the meta the win rate remains a very respectful 58% amongst the highest in the game. Although it's not like the broken side of near 60 of some of the high evolutionary decks and some of the more niche lists, it's still extremely consistent. The thing about this deck that I really like specifically for something like Conquest is that like it really never feels like it's out of a game. It always has an answer. I do see a lot of people are cutting Scarlet Witch and including something like a Luke Cage. So if you are facing a ton of high evolutionary, Scarlet Witch can come out, Luke Cage can come in and give you a little bit of that added tech. But overall, honestly, Sarah Control is in a great spot. It has been for a long time. And if you want to go to the good old reliable list, this is the one to take.
I gotta be honest with you. I really tried to refrain from featuring too many high evolutionary decks, but right now the card is so busted, it's near impossible for me to make a video like this and not talk about it. And I think this is one of the major contenders. It's kind of the evolution of the Sarah control list where now you have Evo control, like this location lockdown list where you have Storm, you have Professor X, you have Spider-Man, you have all these opportunities to completely lock out your opponent with a Daredevil. Of course, you have the Sunspot and Nebula, both which can go vertical and locked out lanes by themselves basically and then of course the massive hulk the reach of doom and the absolute annoyance of cyclops specifically on turn four storm on three cyclops on four boom boom lots of value right uh this deck is probably the most oppressive in marvel snap right now um it is extremely capable of just completely shutting down game plans bounce hates this list not because it's playing wave but it just compresses the the space that you're able to work within because bounce can't deal with storm very effectively it doesn't deal with professor x or spider-man effectively so like it just has an answer for pretty much everything in the meta right now so it's one of those decks that you can turn to but i'm expecting nerfs coming along the line at some point something has to get touched up here because it's just a little too strong now here's a duo of cards we not talked about in some time, and that is Arnim Zola and Black Panther. Now there's a couple things that have happened that have allowed this deck to re-emerge in the meta. So if you think back to when Wakanda Forever released like the movie and the Black Panther season came out, we were experimenting a lot with a, a list like this. And you have the Black Panther, which obviously doubles in power, then Zola procs it, sends it to different locations, they reproc their on reveal doubling power again. It's wild. It's wild. However, at the time, you had Cosmo, which was uh, very frequently being played in Silver Surfer, but the major offender was, was Arrow. Arrow was in everything. So on turn five, you see Black Panther, and then on turn six, it's like, well, Arrow the Zola, mess him up, basically, right? Um, but now Arrow is being played much less frequently. It's completely fallen off the map, despite it being a really good card. It's still one of the best cards in the game, in my opinion. Uh, and so the result is that you have this added space to play these greedy on reveal lists with like wong i've been a huge believer in on reveal lists i've been talking about them for weeks and they're slowly starting to catch up and people are starting to realize that hell on reveal lists are actually pretty damn good you can go extremely wide with something like an iron heart you can go extremely vertical with something like a wolf's bane like cozy and i just talked about this on the snapchat you got the location lockdown of storm the axis of white tiger you have the black panther zola you got everything you need you got everything you need here. And honestly, it's a great list with a ton of potential. And at a 58% win rate, it's going to get you infinite. Okay, so this is the last High Evolutionary deck, I promise. I'm not going to put another one in this video because the reason why I want to talk about this one is it's actually one of the least popular variations of High Evolutionary, but it has a 63% win rate. It's one of the highest win rate decks in Marvel Snap, if not the highest. And it's crazy because people aren't playing it as often as the others because I think the play pattern's a little more difficult. But when you get the hang of it, this deck absolutely slaps. The Hazmat's played relatively early to give you a reduced cost abomination. Meanwhile, getting value out of the She-Hulk in conjunction with Sunspot while also ramping a uh, Hulk for every time you conserve energy. You're running the newly buffed Rogue, which is going to destroy the Dark Cox, the Devil Dinosaurs, and the ongoing cards that everyone likes to play. And of course, you just have just straight up value in High Evolutionary, in the Thing, Cyclops, and the rest. Ultimately, this deck absolutely slaps. It's one of the reasons why High Evolutionary is absolutely crushing it. And honestly, it has a great curve, and it just it has no weakness. It really is an all-around great deck. The only thing it doesn't have is the Storm Lockdown, which is really good with Cyclops. But other than that, it pretty much does everything, and it does it incredibly well. Kind of nervous talking about this deck because um, it wasn't so long ago that anything with the word Shuri in it immediately just angered the entire population of Marvel Snap. And so when I talk about Sauron Shuri at a 50% win rate gem, um, I'm kind of concerned because I think that like Shuri's way better than people give it credit for. Um, I personally love the Shuri Hobgoblin combination, which you don't see here. Uh, Shuri Red Skull, honestly, is still okay. There have been some changes to Red Skull, but it's kind of making a bit of a comeback. And I think that we might see some more gameplay with Red Skull coming forward. I think people are starting to realize that Red Skull isn't as bad as they think it is. I think there's some potential there. And then you essentially just have like good cards you have sauron which strips the ongoing abilities from red skull typhoid um of course uh, your ebony maw which can be played later in the game ebony maw on turn six with a red skull thank you very much there's so much to like here there really is a lot to like here um and uh it's quietly performing pretty damn good at 57 percent. so if you have shuri and you're like you know what i haven't played shuri in a long time you pull sauron from a pack uh this might be just worth checking out because at 57 percent it's going to perform for you. Spider Ham just came out this week, and honestly, it's a pretty cool card. It gives you that leech style effect while giving you the opportunity 
to bounce it. Now, there's a couple things happening here. Now, this, first of all, this is a 62% win rate. It's a gem. It's not seeing a lot of play yet because, well, Spider Hand's relatively new. But if basically you have your kitty bounce base list, no Chavez, and you're running the Spider Ham instead. Now, there's a couple risks here. The first is that if you bounce Spider Ham, you might just hit the same thing over and over. And so the result is that you actually want to play Spider Ham early so that you might hit a four or five cost and then you falcon it up. And then you play it again, maybe you hit their six cost, and then you beast it up, you play it later on to give, you know, the uh, uh, the Angela or the Hit Monkey some extra power, and perhaps you actually end up, I don't know, hitting their, another six cost or hitting something else, right? So the idea is, like, you generally want to hit at least two cards with it, and the third one is usually a power play on Hit Monkey. However... If you play it out on turn five to try and take out a card that you think they might have drawn, like a, like a, you know, whatever it happens to be, right? Like Doctor Doom gets destroyed by it, for instance. I think that it's a really interesting deck. It's an interesting deck. I think we're going to see more variations of Spider Ham, so keep an eye on the channel. We're going to be covering it. Uh, but ultimately, I do think that uh, Bounce is a very natural place for it. But you don't want to like just bounce it and try and hit everything because you could repeatedly hit the same thing, which is super frustrating. But it is notable that you can see what you're hitting, so it provides like Yondu style scouting. So it's a pretty interesting deck. And overall, you still have the Shell of Bounce, which is one of the best decks in the game. All right, so this is my favorite deck of the week, although it has the lowest win rate of all the featured decks at 55%. And we're talking about Dazzling Patriot. The reason why this deck is being held back slightly is because the prevalence of Destroy, which completely dismantles this deck, right? Because you're using Debris, Squirrel Girl, and others to really benefit Dazzler, a recently buffed card. And um, you're going to probably see next week a Surfer-based Dazzler list, because I'm working on a couple of those, and I think some of those are starting to crawl up in the meta a little bit. But this has been a pretty pleasant surprise. And against non-Destroy decks, this deck slaps it really does slap and it works incredibly well naturally with Ultron because Ultron it loves Dazzler it loves Dazzler right so Dazzler is a really easy way to get a ton of value with this particular deck it's just the prevalence of destroy right now kind of holds it back so if you're playing this deck and experimenting and you see someone like drop like a Nova just retreat <laughs> like just retreat it's a little riskier in um, conquest because of that um, you know Killmonger will just mangle this deck but if you don't have Killmonger I mean, then this deck is extremely hard to contest with because you're taking up space with debris and it just puts up a ton of power and you have the Invisible Woman to protect the likes of Patriots. So I like what this deck is doing. And for me, it's a really creative look into what deck building is looking like in Marvel Snap right now. Thanks for watching, guys. I got another video for you down below if you're interested in watching more Marvel Snap content. And once again, I'd appreciate it if you hit the like button. It means a lot to me. And I hope to see you in the next Marvel Snap video.